Hey guys, day six. So yesterday I used my Weather Underground app and woke up just in time for first light. I drove to the Bonneville Salt Flats and I set up my camera to do a time lapse. Uh, here's that time lapse. In it, I'm making breakfast, watching the sunrise. Or it didn't work at all. The battery depleted on the camera. Well, first there was a memory card error, so I lost a lot of footage, but this is what I got. The camera didn't last all the way till sunrise, so I actually used a, downloaded an app on the phone and used the time lapse uh, app there. That was done, I put my dishes away. After the sun rose, started up the van, and what do you know, I am stuck in mud. The tires are whipping up big old hunks of mud. I got mud all on the underside of the van here. I barely made it out of there. <laughs> and I read online that the gas station right next to the Bonneville Flats, they have a hose system there to wash off the undercarriage because you wanna get that salt off of, the, off of your rig. But I asked the attendant and they said that they don't provide any sort of water like that. And he actually told me that this is the wrong time of year to be going out to the salt flats. It's too wet. You really need to go in August. So I drove back to Wendover, the main town, asked the gas station attendant if they knew a place where I could... And she tells me, mm, yeah, there's one place. It's clear on the other side of town. And I'm thinking, like, oh, you mean down the street? <laughs> Wendover is, like, pretty small. But I really just wanted to get back on the road and head to Salt Lake City. But before doing that, I wanted to fill up my water at the gas station. And I think I just discovered the greatest place to fill up water jugs on the road truck stops if you go over to the trucker area where they fill up the diesel into the big semi trucks there's this red fire hydrant looking pipe coming out of the ground you push down this lever here and water comes out in high force and it filled up my eight gallon tank in just a matter of seconds started driving back to salt lake city and decided oh man would be good to have a shower right now so i turned off onto a uh, dirt road I went pretty far down the road and then pull, pulled off in this perfect spot I could back in. Took a hot shower in total privacy. It's funny, Mike from Living Free is actually giving me shit for talking about hot showers all the time. He's like, what's your deal with wanting hot showers all the time? He says he just hops in a lake, you know, a cold lake. It doesn't bother him at all. And I get it, but I originally made a hot shower for like female companions on the road. Women don't like to take cold showers. I even have a hair dryer set up with a generator that powers, uh, puts out enough watts to power a hair dryer. But after experiencing a hot shower on the road, I just have come to like love it, appreciate it. It's the little things on the road. I hate that feeling like two days on the road and then you just start to feel greasy and it just affects my mood, you know? I mean, showers were always a challenge for most of my road trips. It just makes me feel awful. So I love my hot shower. So I had a shower, I emptied my piss jugs, I swept out all the mud from the flats, washed my breakfast pan in the shower, actually. I think I've got a nice routine going on. And then it was out here that it dawned on me that I'm experiencing true happiness right now. It's just uh, independence and freedom. I've got what Lewis calls his rolling earthship. It has all the amenities that I need to live a fruitful life. It allows me to travel for cheap and travel to wherever the ideal weather is. I can cook, wash my dishes, sleep. I've got entertainment, climate controlled area here. I've got free electricity from the sun, powers all my electronics. I've got a fridge in here and then a hot shower. And then most of all, just the freedom of it all. I just feel blessed to be able to experience this dawn of solar technology and even social media so that I could share all this with my van dweller brethren, you know? I've noticed that I've been experiencing a lot of coincidences lately. Like, I mean, for instance, I, the small things. I was listening to a podcast, I think it's called Reply to This, and the woman that was talking had a corrupt SD card with all their vacation photos on it. And then at the same time, my brother who's in France right now messaged me that he was having problems with his SD card. And then this morning, Caleb S., the Caleb Nation, and he replied to one of my messages saying he was, it was funny because he was just thinking about me. Like, where is Bayward? I haven't seen him in a while. And there's a lot of other coincidences that are kind of personal. I won't go into them. But I get, it's interesting to me. It's just, I guess, that the occurrence of these coincidences is increasing. Does it have anything to do with this almost spiritual journey that I'm going through right now? I don't know. Whatever's going on, I'm enjoying it. So I will just follow with whatever the universe tells me. I almost felt it was a sign. I was supposed to head south, but my GPS drove me the wrong way and I actually headed back northeast to my original destination Yellowstone. It's just little things like that. I'm just going to follow with whatever the universe hands to me. 
So enough of that mystical talk. Uh, I got back on the road, continued driving to Salt Lake City. And I saw one of these uh, trucker, uh, TA, uh, trucker spots. Anyway, it stands for Travelers, Travelers Association, sort of like a pilot. And I used that same trick where I went to the trucker lane where they fill up their diesel and I used the spigot and filled up my water again. And I went inside and talked to this clerk there and asked them about the rewards program and if it included free showers. And they said, yes, it did. And I don't have to be a commercial driver. I could be an independent one. So I thought, okay, I'll call myself independent. So he pointed me to this kiosk and I filled it out, all the information there. And then it printed a little temporary member number. Went outside, pumped my gas, and they told me to come back inside with that little temporary account number and then they could apply the credits to it. Well, I came back in and they looked at me funny. They're like, uh, no, it doesn't work for this gas. It has to be diesel. I guess they assumed I knew that or something. Anyways, I got that tip from the channel Van Life. I don't know the guy's name, but he had a video about going to pilot gas stations and if you get 50 gallons of gas, then you'll redeem these points for a free shower. That doesn't seem to be the case. I'm gonna watch the video again. Maybe I missed something. Maybe he's got a diesel rig. But anyways, what does it matter? I've got my own shower. I was really just interested in seeing if that was possible. So I finally arrived in Salt Lake City only to be greeted by this nasty storm that was brewing. But I drove into the city and I hate dealing with parking in the city. So I drove up into the neighborhoods where I know that I can get free parking. And I feel like I've got the perfect combo. I've got my van to take me to each city. And then I got the bike on the back to get from the free parking up in the neighborhoods down into the city and then around the city so I can explore it better. By the time I found a parking spot up in the neighborhood, hoods it would almost turn into like this torrential downpour but I'm all for that because it gave me the chance to use my rain gear I, ha I love this feeling of just being impenetrable to the elements so I put on my rain gear jacket and then bottoms and then I had my waterproof Timberland boots it was awesome I loved it just riding around in the rain and not getting wet at all so this is my second time in Salt Lake City the first time I didn't have a lot of time to spend here so I wanted to check out the temples again and do the guided tours so I went to the uh, South Visitor Center and I talked a lot about how they value families and stuff like that. In the Visitor Center, here's an exhibit that shows how they cut the big granite blocks and then used ox as to move the big granite uh, blocks into place. And here's that big beautiful temple. This thing took 80 years to build and it's not open to the public from the inside, but here's an exhibit that shows what the inside looks like. On a, It's like a miniature model of it. So they told me about this tour. Supposedly it starts 10 minutes after every hour. Coincidentally, these two uh, girls from South Korea that were giving the tour, I had already met them two blocks away about uh, 40 minutes ago when I um, asked if it was okay to ride my bike on the sidewalk. They took us into the old tabernacle. This is what it looks like on the inside. I wanted to see the tabernacle choir perform, but apparently that happens on Thursday nights at 7.30 p.m. And I really don't want to stay another day in Salt Lake City. The tour was like 30 minutes, but it just kept dragging on. And at about the hour point, I was like, oh man, I gotta sneak off, I'm, I'm just too hungry. So I got my bike and pedaled around the city and found a little Greek spot that looked like it was a good place to eat. I think the name was Pedellis. Then I remembered I had parked the van in the shade so the solar panels were not charging and I've already got battery issues as it is. So I pedaled back up the steep steep hill up the neighborhood and by that time I was just really tired and I'm just tired of Salt Lake City. There's not a lot to do here for tourists other than the religious aspect of it. And I, I just had my fill at that point. So I hopped back in the van and drove off to my next destination. On the way, I saw this really cool uh, town that was built into the side of a mountain. And it had a lake on the other side. And it reminded me of what I've seen in Hawaii. And it just looks like a really cool place to retire. I think the name of, a, I think the name of it was Willet. Anyway, I'm off to my next destination. Do you guys have any idea of where I'm going? All I can tell you is it's going to be really steamy. So just tune in to my next vlog and check out where I'm going. See you guys later. Oops. Hey! So here I am, I'm making these vlogs, and I just heard, I just felt like the van shake and a whole bunch of laughing. So there's like some punk kids out there right now. Man, I gotta remember, people can hear me outside. <laughs> probably sound like some creeper van, because you can't see any light emitted. You just probably hear my voice. So I gotta keep that in mind. I need a setup like Cycle Cruise has got with the video camera so you can see all around you, man. That's what I need. All right, take care, guys.